You've probably heard over the past few days that a Utah state senator has said that porn consumption is a public health crisis in his state and thinks, like many Republicans should, that you should be banned from viewing it. A position that seems so ridiculous, you'd wonder how he got as far as he has in his political career. But remember, Rick Santorum was running for the presidency on a position of banning porn across the country. Now, as silly as that is, his defenses for the bill that he put forward perhaps are even sillier. Of course, he didn't go anywhere where he would receive any pushback for that. He went to the Family Research Council. But here are a couple of things that he said. First, and this is not the most ridiculous part of this, he says that libraries and McDonald's should ban porn from being viewed on its public Wi-Fi, saying, you know, these librarians will put their hands over their hearts and talk about the First Amendment, and yet if these libraries and these McDonald's were giving cigarettes to our children, we'd be all up in arms. We'd be picketing them. But somehow it's okay if they deliver pornography to them. They're not delivering pornography to them. The internet is delivering pornography to them. Their curious wandering fingers are delivering pornography to them. The actual analogy you're looking for, Todd Weiler, is the money that allows them to buy the cigarettes. So if McDonald's employs a 16-year-old, pays them, and then they go out and buy cigarettes, that's as close to delivering cigarettes as McDonald's is going to do to them, but you don't think that they should be banned from paying 16-year-olds. They're not giving them pornography. It's not like, here are some fries and here's a threesome. Look at it, little kid. Look at it and enjoy it. They're not doing that. They're simply making the internet available because they know that as much as people like carbs and fat in their diet, they also want to be able to view the internet while they're doing it. But that's not, as I said, the most ridiculous part. The most ridiculous part is this. Here is his argument for why you should be banned from watching porn. That's what I think is lost in the, this First Amendment discussion, because someone may have the First Amendment right, according to the U.S. Supreme Court, to view pornography, but what about my First Amendment right to not view it? And I apologize if you just passed out from a brain cell bursting upon hearing that, but he actually believes that what he just said makes sense. That you being allowed to view pornography infringes on his right because he doesn't want to look at it. And understand what that means. Nobody is being forced against their will to look at pornography. It's not that I walk up to the, the counter to get my Big Mac and, oh shit, I see a schlong on someone's smartphone. That's not what's happening. He's going and finding the porn because as much as he says it's the worst thing in the world, he wants it and he wants it so bad. And I don't blame him because you know who watches porn? I watch porn. And there's a good chance you watch porn. And I got news for you, he watches porn too. And in this conversation, those are the three people that are most important, I think, me and you and him. Porn is perhaps the single most popular product produced in America or in any other country around the world. We would give up food and oxygen and water if possible, if it meant that it would allow us to continue watching porn. He thinks that if it exists, if it's available to be consumed, then how is he or any other person going to stop himself from looking at it? And he's right, but he's wrong about the consequences. Looking at pornography is not a bad thing, even for teenagers, okay? I would say that there are bad things that can come from viewing porn, such as getting a somewhat unrealistic view about what normal human sexuality is supposed to be like, and believing that sexual encounters typically start by ordering a pizza, that might be a concern, and that necessitates, of course, as it has for all of human uh, culture and human history, that you have conversations with your children about porn. But of course, that's uncomfortable, and that requires actual effort. Far easier to simply ban any place from offering even the ability for kids to look at and consume pornography. This is not about porn being a public health crisis. This is about Todd Weiler not wanting to do the hard work of being an actual engaged parent. And thinking that somehow we can turn the clock back on every child back to one before they're naturally interested in sex in the way that every human is. Okay, if you think that the war on drugs is a pointless war because if people want drugs they're going to get it, the war on porn is ten times more ridiculous. Because the physical cravings for drugs, while real and strong, are nothing like the craving that people have for a regular dose of natural human curiosity combined with a little bit of voyeurism and watching some sex. That is what people want and that is what people are going to get, okay? And while we're worried about things like 
making sure that people have the right to vote and making sure that our planet doesn't literally boil away to making sure that our kids are educated and can afford to go to college and can get a job when they go out. Todd Weiler and Republicans in Utah and throughout the country are trying to stop you from viewing teens getting it on and threesomes and maybe a MILF every once in a while. They think that those are the most important issues facing us as a culture, and I wholeheartedly disagree.